This story is about an ordinary guy who works at the office when one day he receives magic powers and starts to use it to his own benefit. The main character is getting a divorce today. Some woman says that it's such a shame that she can't take the house as well. At least she has got plenty of men around her and she feels sorry for her body for living with a loser like him. That woman is his ex-wife, Yoon Hyrin, who fooled him with her looks and acting and made him live with her for three months. The main character says that if she keeps leaving her life as the way she is, she'll eventually pay for her deeds. His wife just reminds him to pay her alimony and mind his own business. Saying that, she leaves. It was only a couple of weeks when he found out about his wife's past. They used to be a secret couple at work. It was not long after marriage that he started hearing the rumors. Their colleagues were gossiping about them behind their back. His male colleague says that he heard rumors about his wife as well. She doesn't only flirt at work, but she also does it in clubs. In short, she ended up marrying him after having all the fun she could have. It wasn't just his wife who looked down on him. He was a pushover who was looked down upon even at work. The main character decides that he's not going to live that life anymore, he's not going to let any woman look down on him again. The mindset of Gigachad starts to form. He's gonna make a change at all costs. How is he supposed to do it? Suddenly a truck appears before him, and instead of death of course takes him somewhere, a typical isekai. Someone asks him if it's his turn. She says that this guy isn't her style either, she's busy so she will just say it once. He realizes that this is not a person and wonders if he's dead. That creature says that any woman who hurts her pride is resentment. Second, she needs to be alone with that woman, it's a space. Third, she needs to make that woman experience pleasure of having a dream job. Resentment, space, pleasure. These are the three conditions that need to be fulfilled to be able to activate it. He asks her, what is she talking about? She says that it's exactly what he wanted, to be able to toy with a woman at his will. The main character asks her if that means that as long as he fulfills those three conditions, then he can control any woman at his will. She adds the command to activate the skill, it's obey. He wonders what kind of situation is this, is he dreaming, is he really dead? He can't understand anything she's saying. She tells him to go and conquer five women to submit, then she shall grant him another ability. He asks her if he's allowed to refuse it. The demon lady says that whether he uses it or not is his decision, however, it isn't really possible for a person with the ability to control human instinct to refuse such an ability. In addition, he has suffered humiliation by women, he just got divorced today and is now forced to pay alimony. She asks him if they shall start the game. The main character asks about kind of ability that she is granting him. His name is Seol Geo Jin. One day he received an ability called Body Bind from a mysterious entity. Seol wakes up in a place that looks like a hospital. Is he still alive? Then was he dreaming just now? The nurse approaches him and says that there is nothing wrong with him, so he may head home if he's awake. But he almost got hit by a car. He asks the nurse if he was in a traffic accident. She says that he wasn't. He just passed out at the pedestrian lane. There's nothing wrong with him. Seol passed out. Then that strange entity was all just a dream. Then he remembers that the command to activate the skill is obey, but that's impossible. He tries that command on that nurse, hoping it would work somehow. She turns around to face him and asks him what did he just say. Shoal says that he didn't say anything, he knew it, of course there's no way it will work. Suddenly a black screen appears before him, notifying him that first condition has not been fulfilled. It appears that this woman can't see this message, it's only visible to him. Then that wasn't a dream, he didn't hurt his head. He thinks that he just got sensitive from the stress he got from the divorce, he better get some rest since the hospital said there's nothing wrong with him. Sol looks at all those bags and remembers that he forgot to throw those away. Three months of miserable memories. Just when he was trying to start afresh, he will throw it away later tonight. He lies down on the sofa and starts to think about that incident with that entity. The body bind that the woman that looked like a demon spoke of, it wasn't just a dream, it was too vivid to be a dream. The hospital even said there's nothing wrong with him. Tenant upstairs obviously was wrecking his nerves. How can she make this noise every single day? He has been too understanding because she said she is new to her, but this is a bit too much. He was having a bad day already, so he can't stand this anymore. Shoal went upstairs to chat with this tenant a bit. She opens the door, UGA, 26 years old female streamer who lives upstairs. He says that he has told her the last time as well, the noise from her floor is too much. The streamer says that she mentioned that she needs to rehearse for the show. Sewell says that she should do it in moderation. Yu grabs his arm and brings him to her apartment asking him to help her out. She says that she needs to install the reflective curtains for her show, but she can't do it alone. 
Isn't she going too far? Just what does she take him for? Doesn't she know why he's here in the first place? She's been looking down on him every time he comes up to complain, and now she's slaving him around. No wonder women keep looking down on him. What's her problem? He hasn't done anything wrong? It's already unfair that he got tricked into marriage, and now he even has to pay alimony. Everyone treats him like a pushover just because he was kind to them. Rather than providing comfort to a heartbroken man, they made fun of him. He can't stand it anymore. Now that he thinks about it, he's alone with this woman here, so it's the perfect opportunity to try out new JoJo poses. Sol wonders if he should do it now with that ability, but what if it doesn't work? But he has got nothing to lose, well he still has his freedom to be honest, so it's something. He tries that command that the demon was talking about. Sol wonders if it worked. Yu turns around to him and asks him the same question that the nurse earlier asked. It didn't work? Was she supposed to hear it clearly? So Seol tries to say it one more time, but now much louder. Some symbols make an appearance. It still doesn't seem that it worked. But the screen lets him know that the command has been activated. You can't move her body. It appears that she had been trapped inside some electric substance. Apparently it's that body bind. A person under the influence of body bind can only move on his command. No matter how much they scream, a person afflicted with body bind cannot be heard by others. Police officer, go bind the body of the main character, please. He ordered her to turn around. Turn around and face him. You obediently did what she was told to do. She can't control her body. This is a great power, with a greater responsibility, perhaps. She tells him to not just stare at her, she can't control her body. Hearing how she talks, is that really someone who is asking for help? He orders her to take off her expensive bunny ears that her followers gifted her when you was finally able to build her dream house in Minecraft. She was going to tell him to stop this thing and help her out, but suddenly her arms started moving on their own. Obviously, she doesn't want to take off her bunny ears because they were expensive after all. Sol wonders how far he can take this. Sol carefully examines her bunny ears. He says that she should have treated him better now it has come to this because she didn't act like a proper lady. Seol started to touch her bunny ears to better understand the material they were made out of. Then he decides to do something a little more interesting. Seol turns on the TV in her room, lies down on her sofa with his legs stretched out and everything, and starts to watch all 3,000 seasons of Detective Conan, effectively forcing her to do the same truly an evil plan. He shows his identification card. This is the company he works for. It is an IT-affiliated company that he has been working at for the past three years. The company employees pay no special attention to him, and why should they? He's not Santa or anything. He's used to it now, same as it was yesterday and today. Some redhead woman asks him if he knows what time it is. Is he late again? Jin Sang Ju, 39 years old. She's the head of the planning team. Seoul says that he overslept while writing a work report for today. He is sorry. She asks, why is he laughing when he is saying sorry? Is he thinking that this company is a joke? This is why he will never get promoted from an assistant manager, she tells him to go back to work. The others start laughing at his failure. Seoul thinks that all that ridicule will disappear starting today. Now this is his body bind ability. This will be his first hunting ground. The body bind ability. It's more powerful than he thought. With this ability, he can control all the women who look down on him. One more thing that he realized from messing with that girl upstairs yesterday. The screen lets him know that the target has been released from body bind due to their exhaustion. As no distractors were present during the duration of body bind, the target can only be rebound 12 hours after their exhaustion. Sewell wonders, what does this mean? He thought the effects were permanent. What now is everything back to normal? You asked him if he enjoyed it. She was going to slap him with all her might, but something stopped her hand midair. Once again, you couldn't move her hand. The screen says that the target of body bind, who experience an exhaustion after watching an anime, cannot hurt the user under any circumstances. He wonders if this is really possible. Shoal says that it looks like her squirming is meaningless, and you doesn't need to act like she's angry. He knows that she enjoyed the series too. Seoul says that he will make her feel so much better next time. Hearing this, you tried to hit him again, but just like the first time, couldn't, so they can't hurt him after they have watched 1,000 episodes together. And this weird feeling he gets when he's home, it's a feeling that doesn't exist in this world. The screen appears before him again, notifying him that he completed this mission successfully. He has made one out of five women exhausted, so he needs to make four more women exhausted, and the reward is unknown. It's what that demon lady told him before. Seoul wants to know about that reward. 
He's sitting at his deck thinking about that reward, four more. He can get the reward after making four more women exhausted. He needs to start looking for his next target. One of his colleagues suddenly gives him some beverage, telling him to drink this while he works. Soren says that she also has a favor to ask. She's Han Soren, 33 just like him, but married. She joined the company with him, but left two years ago to get married. Now she's technically working under him. It's only technically, though. Sol asks her about the favor. She asks him to work overtime for her today since she has something important to do after work. Soren says that she has an important family event, so she really needs to go home. He knows she's married, so she only has him to ask for help. He has never been able to reject her once. It's the same as last time. Seol basically did her work for her. Soren basically shifted all of her responsibilities onto him, and she always was making excuses like her younger sibling got hospitalized or someone needs to watch her sibling at the hospital, and he just couldn't refuse her. He knew she was lying, but what really pissed him off was that one day he overheard her conversation with another colleague. Soren was telling her that she went to the hotel with her husband yesterday and it was really nice. Soren even calls her superior an idiot. Apparently he works overtime for her and himself as well. Her colleague tells her that she is so mean to him. Soren says that she's getting good use out of him. He is dumb anyways. This is why you can't be nice to others. You only get looked down upon in return. You will only continue to be a loser. So after remembering it, Seal refuses to work for her overtime this time. Soren tries to ask him one more time. She'll start screaming at her, telling her that he already told her he won't work for her overtime. He says that he will be sure to calculate all the overtime pay he did for her till now. Soren says that he could have just refused without shouting, and what's with calculating the overtime pay? He offered to do it for her. Why is he going back on his word now? Soren throws away the beverage that she offered him in anger. Then she starts telling her colleagues that Deputy Seol just started yelling at her. He must be taking out the frustration of his divorce on her. Seol picks up that beverage. He has decided who is going to be his next target. Will be Han Soren. He was working at his deck when Soren approached him and said that if he was going to stay late anyways, he could have done her overtime for her. An absolute angel that woman is, no less. Seol says that he's doing his own work. He will leave when he's done. He tells her to mind her own business. Soren says that she wasn't minding his business. She thinks that he's just trying to make fun of her. Sol looks at her in anticipation of his sweet revenge. Soren was making coffee. Then she heard something behind her. It was Seol. She reminds him that he said he will leave soon, but came here to make coffee. Obviously, it isn't coffee that he wants. Sol makes use of that command once again. And just like with you, the chains enfold Soren. Body bind has been activated. The screen lets him know that subjects bound by body bind can only move by following the user's orders, even if the bound subject screams no one else can hear her. Soren asks him to help her since she can't move her body. Seol says that of course she can't, because he made it that way. Soren thinks that this is some kind of hypnosis. She tells him to stop playing around. Sol dures her to try resisting if she can, he wants to see how she looks. Soren tries to call for help outside, but obviously she can't be heard by anyone. Sol says that it's pointless even if she screams, because no one can hear aside from her and him. And with that, Seal begins his revenge. For starters, he orders her to clean his huge and lonely desk since he himself obviously lacks dust gathering skills because his wife left him. Soren is frightened that her arms are moving on their own. She says that it's embarrassing. Then he orders her to wipe the floors with her own bare hands. Can you imagine yourself in this situation? Soren says that she doesn't do that kind of stuff, but once again her hands do it on their own. Then he orders her to stop. Soren kind of liked wiping the floor and noticing it. Seal asked her what's the matter, where is her snobbish look, and what was that facial expression just now? It looks like he offers her that beverage, saying that she must have been tired after that hard work. Soren takes that beverage, noticing that it's the same bottle that she gave him earlier. Sol says that it's going to be tiring since she will be on a night shift. She will be needing it way more than him. Then, Seol orders her to clean the bathroom, holding that bottle on her head for 69 minutes straight. Well, that is especially nasty. However, this time the order doesn't work, her hand isn't moving. Sol wonders if the orders doesn't work on objects. The screen appears before him, notifying him that the specific location is required for the order and command cannot be executed due to unspecified order. It seems like he knew it. So he corrects his order and tries again. Soren's arm is moving again. In the end, Seol himself joins the cleaning. It looks like that app is somewhat of a troll. It says that body bind target had an exhaustion first, so he must be exhausted within one minute. After one minute, body bind is automatically removed. It resets if he cannot get exhausted. He wonders what does that mean? 
but he doesn't have time to delve any further. He has to hurry. He tells her to snap out of it since he needs to get exhausted too. Sol tells her to stop pretending to be weak. The people are so annoying. They do as they please. They ignore people and they even start to pick up on them. She enjoyed being a jerk to him. Seol says that it's her fault and asks him to forgive her just this once. By it obviously doesn't work on him, he doesn't need her apology. So he just continues to be even more of a jerk than she was as expected of the greatest main character of all time. He wonders what's happening. It's the same energy as last time. The screen lets him know that the target's exhaustion dismantled the body bind. Since no interrupter appeared during the body bind, any targets who are exhausted can be rebound after 12 hours. Mission successful, he has made 2 out of 5 women exhausted. He needs to make 3 more. Soren realizes that she can move her body again. He tells her that she's lucky they are done here today. Soren takes the knife and attempts to make Seol a sandwich. But some kind of magic orb protects him. Once again, she couldn't move her arm. For some reason, she just continues to try to make Seol a sandwich. Irresistible logic. In the end, it seems like she gave up. She remembers all of those fun times with him when they were chatting and watching Detective Conan. Why is she remembering what happened yesterday? It's pissing her off. It seems like Seal finally pays you a visit. You wonders if he forgot the combination. He could have just entered on his own. She opens the door, and the Chad himself appears before the Twitch streamer. Shul says that he needs her huge knowledge, all two of them in fact, for a while. He wonders if Bodybind activates even when Seol says it quietly. And so Seol begins his crazy experiment saying the magic word, You didn't appreciate that gesture, so she tries to close the door, but then the unthinkable happens. Bright purple chains appear, similar to the stand of Joseph Joestar. Seol was right, as long as the target is aware that he has said the command, it will work. You once again was trapped in those chains, unable to move. She tells him about it. Sol orders her to walk back inside the living room. He has to be specific with his commands. You did as she was told to. She tries to object, but Seol says that you's annoyingly loud. He advises her to save her breath since you knows she can't do anything. Sol says that she's nothing but his plaything, but it wouldn't hurt to explain. He makes himself comfortable in her chair like it's his own house and says that it's an ability he got one day. He can control subjects' bodies according to his will, but he doesn't have a manual, so he's gonna test this on her. Yu believes it to be some kind of hypnosis. Seol, like a kind soul he is, explains that she probably felt it yesterday. This ability only expires when his target experiences some tasty chicken straight from KFC. He asks if Yu was working out since she's feeling really hot. Then he asks that Twitch streamer to take off her fake eyelashes since they are pissing him off. Yu has no other choice but to comply, and so she begins to take off her eyelashes. Shul then orders her to stand next to him. What do you think he orders you next? If you said that he ordered her to delete her Patreon, you are right, congratulations, you unlocked an achievement. Yu says that he is going to regret this someday. Seol, however, doesn't listen to her saying that if Yu deletes her Patreon, he's gonna buy her that tasty chicken. Then the main character becomes somewhat of a ghoul, he just needs to sing an opening to truly embrace his inner self and go into the Oshiteo mode. Yu begins to do it. The amount of her Patreon subscribers is so big that it surprises even her. But you successfully completes her task. Seol is afraid that nothing is going to happen since he's not getting any new status messages. And that means it doesn't matter how many times he rewatches Naruto as long as the woman doesn't know one thing about it. He then orders you to look at him. Seol decides to know one thing he's really curious about. He asks her how do the chicken nuggets taste? But it seems like you doesn't want to answer so we can conclude that she may be on a diet. Then she notices that Seol has her phone. You ask him if he took a video. Seol kindly explains that her phone is locked, so if he wanted to take a video, he would use his own Nokia Pro. And then Seol decides to begin the third experiment. He orders you to tell him her phone's passcode. In the beginning, you resists his irresistible magic, telling him to stop touching her phone. She has subway surfers installed on it. Seol concludes that he can only control her actions, but not her speech, so it may be the reason that the program is called Body Bind. He gives you the phone. Shul says that he hasn't eaten dinner yet, so he's a little hungry, and with that, Seol tells her to order them some fried chicken. Once again, you resist. Shul tells her to make sure they leave the food at the door, and her hands begin to order the food on their own. Seol is interested in one aspect about the program. What if someone interrupts them while it's active? The delivery guy will surely be considered a distraction, so he specifically asked to leave it at the door so that the delivery guy wouldn't see them. With that, the order has been placed. He then orders you to put her phone away since it's going to be a while before the food comes. 
and he feels like he wants to test his luck in new region of Genshin Impact. It seems like Yu isn't much of a gamer since she struggles a bit on some boss in the abyss. Seol lets her know that he enjoys seeing her struggle. It adds to the excitement. She'll notice something. He notices her setup saying that he likes it and concludes that this is why Yu was making all that noise. The Houdini realizes that he has one more thing to try out. Seol orders you to stand up. He tells her to walk over to the streaming desk, and then to set up the camera in a way that he's not visible behind her. Time to start streaming. Yu asks him to stop. She can't stream like this. What if her mama sees her? That would be unfortunate. Her hand clicks on the mouse, and it seems like her Twitch career is over. Yu would need to find another job, like a conductor. Soul is surprised that it still works. Bodybind is still active. He is also surprised at the loyalty of her fans. They're really not holding back on expenses. Shoal orders you to walk backwards and do 100 jump ropes in front of him to impress her friends even more, and so she begins to do it. Yu's fans are all encouraging her with insane donations, maybe she can order pro gamer chair with it. She experiences a whole new sensation that sweeps over her when Yu thinks about all games that she can buy with those donations. Seol tells her to move on to the next step to do more jump ropes. Yu remembers all of those physical education classes she took back in high school, and with this knowledge, Yu begins to jump more frequently and enthusiastically. At the same time, we see Seal's colleague who is asked where she is going. The guy asks her what's up with her today. Seal's colleague says that it's nothing, she's just a little tired and needs to use the bathroom. Then we see Soren in the bathroom, she looks a little upset. Soren keeps thinking about Seul, she wonders why is that? In the meantime, Yu continues to show her prime form to her followers. Sewell notices her excitement and tells Yu to stop. He can't allow Yu to be exhausted so soon. Yu herself wants to continue since she already imagined her new fancy Barbie house that she is going to build with all those donations. Sewell lets her know that it's completely different from what she said a while ago. Yu says that she thought she would become famous through the stream, so you look down on people like Sewell working full time. It seems like Sewell values chicken way more than some exercises, because right when Yu was about to be done with her jump ropes, Sewell stops her saying that the delivery isn't here yet. The screen lets him know that the distractor is within 19 meters. If discovered by a distractor, body bind will deactivate and the situation will be reset. The warning only appears if the distractor is coming towards him, that makes sense because there are always other people in the area, so the system figures out who's coming directly towards Sewell. Sewell is sure that he won't be discovered, he specifically put leave at the door as the instructions. So Bodybind will remain active. It appears like the delivery guy is already at the door. Hearing that sound, Sewell panicked. How come the delivery man can unlock the door? That means they live here. Meanwhile, the door slowly opens. The woman lets you know that she's home. She obviously didn't come home to be greeted by the scenery of you doing 69 jump ropes with some random guy. So she panics. Yu tries to explain the situation. Meanwhile, Sul, who once again activated his ghoul mode, realizes that Yu has a sister and wonders what's going to happen now. The screen lets him know that the mission failed, Bodybind has been deactivated due to interruption from an intruder, all situations will be reset prior to the activation of Bodybind. Sewell received a penalty from the mysterious screen, but he was just reduced by one woman instead of all. He wonders if that means if he gets caught by an intruder, the count will just be reduced by one. It seems like Yu's sister is paralyzed because of all his chadness. Paralyzed to the point that she literally disappears probably to the other dimension, where she would be reincarnated as a goddess. Sewell himself is obviously frightened. Something awful is also happening to Yu. Some kind of substance that resembles a purple gel is coming out of her back. Someone says that Sewell was told he would enjoy this. That demon lady suddenly appears before him. She says that Sewell is doing better than she expected. It's not easy to be rational when instinct takes over. However, he needs to see it through to the end. Sewell asks her what's going on here. The demon lady realizes that he is surprised because she suddenly appeared. The lady explains that she's here because she has business with him. Since he failed once, she's going to take something from him. Saying that the demon lady points at his nose for some reason and then tells him that it's done. He may continue enjoying the game. She can always fill in for the failed one since he has got plenty of women around him. The demon lady tells him to go and enjoy fulfilling his greed. The demon lady says that she is starting to like him even. She's also very curious about the outcome. Before she leaves, Sul tries to ask the lady about the girl that disappeared. But the demon lady is already gone. The screen lets him know that the mission will now restart, and due to the failure of body bind, the successful count of women has been changed from two to one and four women remaining. All situations will now be reset. Sewell finds himself in the apartment corridor. 
Yu opens the door and he realizes that this is what happened a while ago, so this is what it means by resetting prior to activation of body bind. Now Sul gets it, so this is what was meant by reset when interrupted by an intruder, and what he witnessed earlier with the girls disappearing, it was all an illusion. Yu interrupts his thoughts, asking why is he here again. Sul clearly remembers everything about the livestream and everything that girl said. He says that he came here just in case Yu was thinking about yesterday. Hearing this, she becomes furious, and closes the door. Sul thinks that there is no point in activating Bodybind right now. Her sister is going to be here soon anyway. It's a shame, but he needs to postpone it for another time. But he never knew of her sister's existence. In the meantime, Yu wonders what's up with him. He just showed up suddenly and started to spout nonsense. This ability is unbelievable. In short, Sul is invincible. He can just simply restart whenever he fails a mission. Yeah, that is called quick saving. An ability with no consequences. There's no need to conduct tests anymore. But then he notices that something is wrong. Turns out he can't smell anything. The screen appears telling him that a penalty has been incurred due to the intruder's interruption. Among his five senses, his sense of smell has been eliminated. In the event of another failure, a sense from his remaining four senses will be eliminated at random. But Sewell has two ways of regaining his senses. First is to make a woman who has previously been under body bind unlock a hard achievement in GTA. And the second is to end body bind with all five women earning platinum in Dark Souls 2. Sewell was careless. He knew it was too good to be true. He might have gotten lucky and escaped with just this. Sewell never knew the penalty was random. He could lose his sight next time if he fails, so Sewell can't afford to be careless. First of all, he needs to regain his sense of smell. Now that the girl upstairs has reset, the only girl under the body bind is Soren. Sewell calls for Soren, saying that he would like to have a word with her for a moment. Today, he has a favor to ask of Soren. Soren isn't in the mood to talk, so she tells him to ask someone else. Sewell asks her if she already forgot about the last night. They were alone last night, but that can change. Soren has no choice but to hear him out. Sewell tells her that she needs to do something for him. He needs Soren to let him teach her the ways of a ninja so she can Naruto run away from her responsibilities at work. Soren, however, tells him that she doesn't remember what happened last night and asks Sewell how long he's planning to keep this up. Sewell doesn't like her tone. He says that he can freeze Soren again. Hearing this, she becomes much more obedient. Sewell takes the bottle out of her hands. Apparently, Sewell doesn't like her drinking habits, maybe because he is such a chad that he instinctively rejects the idea of coffee. The flashback begins in which Soren hadn't revealed her true colors yet. She offers Sewell some coffee, saying that having some caffeine in the morning is good if he's tired. Sewell thanks her for the consideration. But of course she didn't do it because she's such an angel. Soren actually wants him to do her a favor. She has some urgent matters back home, but has overtime tonight, so Soren asks Sewell to fill in for her. Sewell says that he has something to take care of at home, too. At that time, he didn't consider her a bad person. Sewell overhears the conversation he is called a pushover. It is revealed that it is Soren and their colleague gossiping about him. The colleague calls him a pushover, too, and says that he always covers Soren's overtime in addition to his own. Sewell thought that he misheard them. He thought he knew what kind of person Soren was. But he obviously didn't expect her to be as bad as the others. There was another thing Sewell overheard that day. Apparently, Soren and her husband aren't really compatible. Her husband is a bit dull. So in the present, Sewell reminds Soren of that conversation telling that he knows she isn't satisfied with her husband. And after saying that, he begins to explore a mysterious cave. Sewell apparently wants to find some treasure in that cave because he explores it so diligently. But even when the cave was cleared, nothing was happening. Sewell wonders what happened to the status window. The status window finally appeared, telling him that there has been some kind of error. It's also telling Sewell that the location wasn't cleared using his own wand, so it doesn't count. Well, he was going to clear another location anyway. But when Sewell was beating some monsters in that long cave, they heard a ring. It was the team leader. Sewell wonders if he should answer. The team leader asks him if he's late again. Sewell says that he worked late yesterday. Jin tells him to get some coffee on the way. Sewell is already angry at her. Jin is treating him this bad just because she is in a higher position. But then he pays attention to Soren. Her expression changed. Sewell lets her know that he is done with exploring today. Soon after, Sewell came to the team leader's office. He apologizes for being late, saying that he had to get the things she asked him to do. However, Jin isn't too happy because it's been 20 minutes she asks him where is the cake. Jin tells Sewell that she ordered him to bring her the usual. Sewell didn't know what kind of cake he was expected to bring since the team leader didn't mention it over the phone. Jin orders him to go get it. Jin orders him to get her a fresh cup of coffee since Her Majesty is not built to drink stale coffee. 
It seems like our main character's favorite movie is American Psycho, since he's going to psych all over the place. Nevertheless, Sewell says that he will get it. In the meantime, the team leader's phone rings. It was the department manager, and seems like the department manager called the team leader somewhere. Sewell thinks that she should at least pay him for it. How did he end up like this? He can't even remember when things went wrong. The flashback begins that takes us to approximately three years ago. It was from the first round of promotions. After Seul lost the promotion race against Jin Sangju, even though they got hired at the same time, the department manager asks him if he entered the company at the same time as Jin. Seul says that he did. The apartment manager says that he will have more opportunities in the future so Seol shouldn't get discouraged. Jin tells Seol that she looks forward to working with him. That night an event occurred that shattered his motivation. The team leader approaches him. Saying that she understands Seol must be feeling bad, she knows he worked hard on the proposal but she was the one who got promoted. Seol says that she deserves it. The team leader isn't happy that Seol continues to talk casually with her. She says that even though they entered the company at the same time, but she's older than him and now she outranks him on top of that. The team leader tells Seal to learn how to respect his workplace relationships. Since Seal is in tough situation, he has no other choice but to agree. It was at that moment when the team leader started treating him like her dog. Seol even considers quitting, but he still needs the money. He should have been promoted ahead of her. Suddenly, his colleague appears before Seol and says that the team leader wasn't at her desk and asks him if he knows where Jin is. His colleague also tells Seol that if he meets the team leader later, he should tell her that today's client meeting is cancelled. Shoal stands outside of the CEO's office wondering how long is Jin going to stay in there. 